Shalom family. I'm here with my son and he's going to do a commentary on the book of Roots. And here he is, my son. You've, you've heard him before on this channel. Uh, Shalom family. Hope everyone's doing great. Okay, what are we going to do here? He read the the book Roots and we saw Roots, the older generation. We saw Roots on television, but they left out many, many different things. So what we're going to do here I'm going to ask him a series of questions and he's going to explain you what he got out of the book. Okay, question number one. What made you read Roots? Okay, um, honestly, Roots was one of those things that I watched growing up and I kind of forgot about it like most people. Um, however, at the school I work at, there was a student that had the book on her bookshelf for a long time and thought that I would be interested in reading it and she brought it to school one day and my eyes just lit up like wow a, a, a book that i've really been you know something i really enjoy reading so that's mm -hmm. it, it it wasn't even on my mind to be honest it just came across me through a student and that's what got me into reading roots okay most people we didn't read the book of roots we're not bookworms i never read the book uh the book my understanding it goes into details and the movie left out so much and so that's why we're doing this okay next question was you surprised at what you read um yes and no yes um no because you know where we understood the, the aspect of slavery and the things that generally happen but yes because when you go into it in a literature point of view you get more details you get the things that cannot be put in movies for censorship purposes you mm -hmm. get you can read these things that you can't watch in movies the things that would just be horrible just to see with your own eyes Whenever you get the reader's perspective and even the um the viewpoint of you know Kunta himself and all the others, it's it's very surprising to hear and just read about the things that happen. It's it's, it's surprising. Okay, so it's true what they say. Uh, you want to hide something from you know our people, just put it in the book. And we knew of the book, and none of us read the book. Amazing. Okay, the next question. Do you see a similarity between our people today compared to what's in the book? Yes, definitely. I see that. And um, most of the book starts out with Kunta's perspective. I'm really glad about that because it was the foundation of, you know, the family that progressed through Roots. What I mainly see is you can see something very clear, clear as day, but you try to get other people to see it and they just, they don't see it. They're too hard-headed and they're too stuck in their own ways. Kunta was straight from Africa, so he was surprised to see the people work so complacently under their master. The people when he as soon as he got there he saw the people with, you know, tools in their hands and he was wondering why aren't they using these tools to revolt. He was surprised at how the people were Wait, wait, wait. So they was using tools mm -hmm. to work but not revolt. Yes. They, they could have used the tools against the masters yes, the as people, weapons. Exactly. He was surprised that the people were so brainwashed. And also, um, during certain celebrations, Kunta looked at the people, the women that were dancing, and he said, wow, they know they know not who they are, but they dance just like the women from my village. You know, mm, So, so no even matter, though the women didn't know who they were, they was dancing like the people from the village. Yes, back exactly. From his home. Yes, that's one uh, one of the similarities. And also, uh, another similarity I know is how, how our people, we adapt, either for the positive or negative. We come up with um, a resolve and we end up adapting. It can, e mm -hmm. it can be through giving up or finding a, a dream or a hope to keep you strong. And in Kunta's case, it was freedom, which was mainly emphasized because he was pretty much one of the only slaves that actually thought about freedom. All the other slaves on the plantation knew, knew him as you know, the Negro talks about freedom <laughs> as if it's a foreign aspect. That's a bad thing to be yes. once out of captivity. That was bad. He was looked at as a bad guy. And he got a reputation for it. Just like if you were to leave Babylon right now, your family would be saying, oh, that's such and such. They left America. Could you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> Something's going to happen to you for coming out of this captivity. All right. The next question. Tell us about the mindset of our people that Kunta saw. Ooh. The mindset of the people that Kunta saw, that's almost like the question that um, I just went, that we just went over. The mindset of the people, um, I'll speak about their mindset about um, Kunta being from Africa. Whenever they heard that he was from Africa, it was like a celebrity type thing. Like, whoa, mm. you're from Africa, you know, you're, you're that African Negro, yes. you know? And they had a really negative idea of um, Africa. To summarize the question, I would say lost. And they were so lost that they 
um, magnified white culture and demonized. Okay, so Africa. they had a negative viewpoint about the homeland or the land they was captured from. And this negative view is, we you, sh you came from this place and they're looking down on someone that's coming from, a from another place. Yes, and I guess that's primarily because, you know, most of them on the plantation they were already, they were born there. That's one of the things I like about all the roots is it starts off, you know, in a latter part of slavery when someone had just been brought over mm -hmm. and blacks had already been systematically, psychologically programmed. So the fact that anyone from Africa was like a exotic luxury type of thing because mm -hmm. most of the slaves that were there were already born there. So you can see a huge contrast between the way that they thought, you know, they, they looked at anything that he did or anything he said and you know they smiled and it was kind of strange to him mm. you know it was like an amusement type of thing yes and he's looking at them like what are you doing like <laughs> do you not know who you are and they looking at him like he's some type of you know funny type of figure they know? were completely lost but they looking at him like you just strange person and they couldn't understand each other because they had two mm -hmm. different mindsets this goes on today the people that stuck in babylon they have that mindset you know, everything's okay here. Why are these people going over there? You don't have to do this. The Most High is going to do this. We have two different mindsets. A slave mindset and one that wants to be free. Mm. And um, their, their mindset, it even made them joke a little bit. <laughs> there was uh, there was uh, one scene. They was like, I'm sure you, you got that in Africa, don't you? you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next question. Kunta heard them. When he came to the land... He heard them calling on L-O-R-D-G-O-D. -D. What did he think when he heard them calling on these names? Oh, I, I remember this part um, directly regarding the L-O-R-D. Actually, the way the book right from um, the way that the book narrates it is, um, Kunta looked and he heard them shouting, and he must have assumed that their O-L-A-W-D was their Allah. And mm -hmm. to Kunta, you know, Allah is you know the um, the Most High. And they didn't even they didn't even call him L O R D. They call him L A W D. And I found that mm. um, very very interesting because that's just how our people do things now. Yes, but, put a um, twist on it. Yeah, uh, he noticed that they called on that name, and he also noticed they called on J E S U S. And he said mm -hmm. he was confused. Which J -E -S -U -S, one is the mighty one? S U S. And he was confused. Who is the mighty one? All these names and titles, not knowing who 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 are they calling on? And he eventually came to the conclusion that they're kind of mutually exclusive and that they might they pretty much mean the same thing that they both are their you know that are their version of all of them mm -hmm. okay all right the next question did kunta sounds as if he knew torah or had knowledge of torah hmm okay interesting question um regarding knowledge of torah I want to ultimately say um, no to that because this is um, a later part of slavery. So the people during this time, we were way, way, way off. However, mm -hmm. I will say that there were traditions that I can find similar to um, Torah, such as um, their manhood training. Okay, they mm -hmm. did. They were not circumcised on the eighth day. They they were circumcised during their manhood training to become men. Mm -hmm. They so even though they were off, they realized that this procedure was important they just didn't do it at the right time mm -hmm. um men um that's pretty much all i can remember from torah um everything else was like a a traditional type of thing that got passed down it's hard to link exactly uh to torah okay all right um next question tell us about the holidays Ooh, this is interesting mm -hmm. because um at first um kunta was carried over you know they had their their holidays and he just you know he abstained from it totally 100 percent. he abstained from the holidays at first he um, it took some years you know mm -hmm. but this is how things work with our people this is how things go you know it's a slow process if you want someone to do something um he knew that it had nothing to do with with his mighty one he did not want to partake in at, at all so it was strange to him it was very very strange and he was confused how can you slave and work for someone and then one day you just forget about it have a feast with them he was confused why the blacks were dancing and entertaining the whites and having this feast day he didn't understand it at all the, his perspective was our life is in turmoil we are not our masters we are slaves why mm. are we dancing why are we singing why are we feasting why are we celebrating mm. this is what he was really confused about and what made him even more confused is 
you know, not only why are we doing this, but why are we doing this, you know, in the audience of the master? And why yes. is he enjoying this? Yes. Know? They are celebrating together. Like our people, our people come together, came together on feast days, but they was coming together with their slave masters and they were okay. They was okay with it. Mm -hmm. And he was confused. And it's almost just like today, you know, all these things happening in America, police brutality, this happening, that happening. But on holidays, blacks just forget. We forget. And we have a good old time. We go to church. We do our New Year's Eve party. We do our Christmas yes. party. We do everything. We just forget about the atrocities that happen to us. Yes. New Year's come in. Everybody's at Times Square. Everybody's watching the ball drop. And here we go, coming together with those that has that have their feet on our necks telling us to stay on the ground that we may walk on you celebrating a holiday that our forefathers didn't know of celebrating a holiday our forefathers didn't know of we see these things happening today we see us when we were born we partook of the same holidays we was doing the same thing that they it's, it's gonna be, <laughs> we we were partaking of the same days that they partook of anything else on that um, no, that's pretty much all. Okay, the next question. What was the mentality of the slave masters? Mentality of slave masters, um, which is interesting. I, um, through the book, you see different plantations, different masters. Um, some masters were very, very cruel. Some were slightly just, you know, um, as humans. Some of our people mm. take care of dogs better than the other people. Mm -hmm. This is just how the masters were. Some of the masters would um, let their slaves go to um, other plantations and seek out women if they wanted. Mm -hmm. um, some masters were very cruel. Some masters would um, buy young girls in, in certain situations, such as um, Kunta's daughter. There was something wrong that they did, and Kunta's daughter named Kizzy, she got sold off. Unfortunately, it was to a white man that just, in his opinion, he, in his own words, loves young Negro women. Mm. So he wrecked her the first night she was there. So you have some plantations, everything's okay, to the point where the slaves actually like being with the master not because they like being in slavery because they would hate for the opportunity for someone else to come and be worse to them mm -hmm. you know it's, it's better the devil that you know than the devil that you don't know that's mm -hmm. what they say mm -hmm. so um the the way that the masters treated the people varied some of them were very kind some of them were very harsh mm. okay this is very very interesting okay the next question what did kunta think about the so-called white woman um upon arriving to america he saw white women and the book narrates it as this i could see why the white man acted so animalistically towards the black women at first on the slave ships the men were just acting like complete demons when it came to the women and kunta thought to himself there must not be any women in white man land he called it tubob land because uh, in kunta's language tubob means um white men mm -hmm. and he was thinking that they didn't even have you know women of their own and then whenever he finally got to america he he called it he called them a specimen mm. upon looking at the specimen i can see why the black man uh, desired our, our women so he didn't look at him as the slave master but a specimen yeah the women looked at the women as a specimen looked at the women as a specimen actually almost all of them as a whole as a specimen he looked he said um he noticed a two bot family he looked at them as he would look at a, a pack of kittens. He he did not regard them equally because of the atrocities that they committed. Okay, the next question. What issues did Kunta face marrying a Christian slave? Yes, um, Kunta married a Christian uh, slave named Belle. She was good and she got him a job as a driver. However, there was some issues because she was a Christian woman. Um, such as, you know, his daughter Kizzy being um, christened at church. He was not happy about that at all. Um, you have the influences of her religion on the child, and Kunta wasn't happy about that. So that's uh, an issue that he faced. Okay. Um, also, you know, um, I, I, noted, I noted before that he wasn't partaking of the religions. After he was um, courting Belle, this is when he slowly began, over the years, to uh, rationalize and join mm -hmm. in. At first, he wasn't um, partaking, but, but he said... They're having such a good time. I'm sure all I wouldn't mind if I just watch. And mm. This is how it escalated from there. Yes. And now it's a normal thing. However, he never digressed and did things like eat pork. That's actually one of the things that he vowed never to do. Wait, wait, wait. He didn't do what? He, he vowed never to eat pork. So, yes, this is another linking of Torah. He yes. did not eat pork. This is another linking to Torah. He did not eat pork. The pig. He. They had knowledge of this. And this knowledge came from somewhere. And he continued 
not eating pork. 